new psychological study from the National Institute of Mental Health. Just this morning, along with long time The circle of depression is growing wider, broader. 15% of women suffer from this disorder. Abnormalities in the neurotransmitters. Six million American kids take prescribed medication. But what if the criminal is mentally ill? The punishment, a form of aversion therapy. Ten and it on the show, but I want to... Oppositional defiant disorder. School is criticized for over Donde quiera que mires, ahí está. ¿Piensas que la psiquiatría no tiene nada que ver contigo? Piénsalo otra vez. Todo el campo de la psiquiatría se ha metido en cada faceta de tu vida. They basically believe that everyone is mentally ill. You smoke too much, it's a disease. You are too unhappy, it's a disease. You're too thin, it's a disease. You're too fat, it's a disease. Where are these coming from? These are coming from the minds of psychiatrists that are dreaming these things up, writing papers and, get, and getting published with their names on it, calling, creating these new diseases. First he said that I had ADD. Then he said that I was depressed. Then he said I might be bipolar, but I don't have ADD anymore. And he said, you know, I've been noticing you, and I, I wonder if you have it too. What they decided is that both my husband and my son had a chemical imbalance that needed to be corrected with a chemical balancer. There is not one shred of credible evidence that any respectable scientist would consider valid demonstrating that anything that psychiatrists call mental illness our brain diseases or biochemical imbalances. It's all fraud. There is no reliability of diagnosis, and there is no science. It's just pseudoscience. It's pretend science. This is one of the most open secrets in all of America in the psychiatric field, that nothing, nothing is being done that's legitimate, and they're billing for it. Los psiquiatras afirman que más de mil millones de los habitantes del planeta están mentalmente enfermos. En los últimos 30 años han prescrito medicinas psiquiátricas a 543 millones de personas. Y ahora mismo drogan a 17 millones de estudiantes con estimulantes y antidepresivos. Al preguntarles recientemente sobre la base científica de su profesión, los psiquiatras dispuestos a ser entrevistados no ofrecieron más que excusas. Psychiatric uh, uh, illness is, uh, is not really an uh, illness. How do you uh, evaluate if someone is cured or, or sick? Cure is certainly something we look forward to. We had no earthly idea how to accomplish. We're not good at causes. We don't know what causes mental illness. Pero eso no les ha impedido declararse expertos en salud mental y tratar a la gente en contra de su voluntad. ¿Y los resultados? This psychiatrist, man who's supposed to work to heal people, has done nothing but destroy this man's life, and in destroying his life, destroying the lives of all of his loved ones. Excuse me. They've damaged and ruined my son, and they've trapped him in a system. The way that they treated him and made him feel like he was worthless. Riot was being kept dumb and, and high on Ritalin so that they could make $2,500 per month. He gave me Valium and um, I got addicted to it. It wiped out my life. My life has been ruined. Uh, my joy has been stolen. She was lying there. She took two two gasps of air and died right there in front of me. It is really tragic. It's awful. And it's being done for money. That's why it's being done. Oh, it's got to be in the billions. I don't know the exact number, but it's got to be in the billions. It's, it's just unbelievable. This is so big that it's... it buckles the mind. Toma la tragedia humana que acabas de ver y multiplícala por millones. En las últimas cuatro décadas murieron en hospitales psiquiátricos del gobierno casi el doble de americanos que en todas las guerras de Estados Unidos desde 1776. Las compañías de seguros pagan 69 mil millones de dólares al año por servicios psiquiátricos, doblando el costo de las primas de seguros médicos. Y mientras se embolsan más de 2 billones de dólares al año, los psiquiatras no pueden mostrar ni una sola cura. 
difícil de creer? Eso es exactamente con lo que cuentan. Y como te mostraremos, esa es la forma en que desde el principio se han salido con la suya. of psychiatry have to do with control, power, and alienation from certain groups of people who were uncomfortable to be around. They were locked up in these places to get them out of the way. Uh, the history of psychiatry, I think, really is related to institutions. El Hospital Bethlehem Royal de Londres fue una de las primeras instituciones psiquiátricas del mundo. Conocido comúnmente como Bedlam, el hospital no era más que un depósito para quienes se creía que estaban locos. Se encerraba a los internos en jaulas, closets y establos, se les encadenaba a la pared y se les azotaba, mientras el hospital cobraba la admisión para que el público los viera. En el siglo XVIII, William Bally fue el primero en promover que sus hospitales podían curar a los enfermos mentales. Los manicomios de Bari lo hicieron el hombre más rico de Inglaterra, aunque sus tratamientos eran tan inhumanos como los practicados en Bedlam sin un solo paciente curado. Su éxito financiero desencadenó un auge en el negocio de los manicomios y la oportunidad para que los psiquiatras se aprovecharan de esta nueva industria. This was an era where on both sides of the Atlantic specialized institutions for the mentally ill are beginning to be built in large numbers. Those institutions date back certainly to the beginning of the 18th century and in a few cases even earlier than that. Uh, but the explosive growth of an asylum sector, of asylumdom as some historians have called it, is very much a, a 19th century phenomenon. Uh, it's that period when the state is persuaded to invest tax dollars in building these places. Pero mientras los que dirigían los hospitales se hacían ricos, a los psiquiatras, sin embargo, les faltaba credibilidad para aumentar al máximo sus ingresos. In order to justify their profession, they needed to come up with these biological solutions, or they didn't, didn't have any profession. The only way for them to solve that was to attempt to start uh, believing that that these people that were suffering from emotional disorders was from, from a biological basis. Whatever was done to make this person more manageable would be simply called a treatment. And the sad reality is that many of these so-called treatments were, in essence, torture. The near-drowning devices that were developed in this period, for example, must have been appallingly frightening. For example, one device involved putting the patient into a coffin, closing the lid, and dumping it into a bath of water, and then opening it up and trying to revive the patient. There were a range of these things and the mortality rate was, was very, very high. Entonces, los psiquiatras buscaron dar crédito a su ejercicio disfrazándolo con el lenguaje de la medicina. El darle una nueva imagen al tratamiento se llegó a conocer como modelo médico. Somebody who's really hyper and manic, uh, if you're wrapped up in a cold sheet and dunked into some water, you're going to quit acting manic because that's a punishing uh, treatment. So, but as soon as the symptoms started to go away, they started to believe that somehow by wrapping them up and dunking them in cold water, it was um, draining the toxics out of their body. So they built the medical model around that. Llevando más allá la teoría biológica de la enfermedad mental, un americano, Benjamin Rush, propuso la idea de que la locura la causaba demasiada sangre en la cabeza. La cura, quitar la sangre por cualquier medio. Inmovilización, agua helada, sangrado, incluso el terror. Y con eso se creó un nuevo modelo médico. Benjamin Rush was probably the most famous American physician of the revolutionary era. Uh, Rush was known as the master bleeder. He bled his patients for madness. He also invented something called the tranquilizer. It's a chair that looks a little bit like an electric chair. 
The patient was confined in this apparatus, uh, sometimes with cold water applied to his or her head, for some hours at a time, and Rush announces in a letter that he's invented this new contraption and dubbed it the tranquilizer. Los procedimientos a menudo letales de Rush se detallaron en su manual de 1812, que siguió siendo la fuente autorizada de la psiquiatría durante 70 años. 